the roll rate stops and the six-foot pilot parachute deploys, pulling away the R&R &R section and deploying the main parachute. The spacecraft shifts from a one to a two-point Gemini-type chute suspension and gently floats to the sea below. The spacecraft landed in the prime recovery area, about 20 miles west of the Navy carrier Lake Champlain. It had traveled a total of 2,127 statute miles in just over 19 minutes. Department of Defense recovery forces, already deployed along the flight path, immediately go into action. U.S. Navy swimmers and their equipment are dropped at the scene by helicopters from the recovery carrier. The equipment includes a flotation collar, which is attached to the spacecraft to provide additional buoyancy until the spacecraft can be lifted out of the water. Meanwhile, other helicopters search the surrounding area for the rendezvous and re-entry module. This section, lined with buoyant material, was recovered about a half mile from the spacecraft, an extra bonus in the Gemini 2 success story. Then the Lake Champlain pulls alongside. A huge crane swings out over the spacecraft, and at 10.45 a.m., just an hour and 41 minutes after liftoff, the spacecraft is hoisted from the water. The flotation collar removed, the spacecraft is placed on a special dolly on the deck of the carrier to await return to Cape Kennedy for complete analysis and inspection. Gemini 2, the re-entry mission to qualify the spacecraft for manned flight, is complete. Visual inspection on board the carrier indicates mission success. Mr. Charles W. Matthews, Gemini program manager, had this to say about the mission. On the basis of first-look information, we foresee no trouble that would hold up the first manned mission.